Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing can replace faith. By faith, we were saved. Through faith, we receive the promise of God. We please God with faith. Everything in the kingdom of God is by faith and through faith. And now no way. You want to do the will of God? It's by faith. Everything. Remember, because the kingdom of God is spiritual. Amen? And God designed that everything is in his kingdom is by faith. Amen? Let's see some scriptures. Hebrews 11 is a good place to start. Amen? Let's start in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen? Hallelujah! Faith is conviction that you're going to get what you are believing for. Amen? That's, that's faith. The substance that you have, you see, you have it and you have because you believe. Amen? Hope. This hope is talking about a heavenly hope. Hallelujah. So you have that confidence that you are you're going to receive from God what God has promised to you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's pass to verse 2. Say, for by for by it the elders obtain a good testimony. Hallelujah. We have a sample that these elders obtain good testimony because their faith amen not because something they did was because faith they believe god and because they believe god they obey amen we obey god because we believe god amen hallelujah this is the testimony of this elder because their faith i encourage you to study hebrews 11 together and in chapter 12 together. They encourage you in your faith, that your faith gets stronger. Amen? That's by faith, these elders have great testimony. Amen? Because their faith, nothing else, because their faith. You know, Abraham, he received the righteousness of God by faith. <laughs> you see, and by faith, he get out from his country, from his relative, and follow God by faith. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and Abraham is our father. Abraham is the father of faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to verse 3. Amen. By faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things we are visible. You see? Even the world were framed by faith. That's a God of faith. You know, by the word of God. Hallelujah. God spoke the word into existence. Amen. He declared the word, and the word were framed, became in existence because God spoke. You see, it's something, an example for us. You know, we do things like that. We speak things. You see, Jesus, when he walked here in the air, he speak things. He called, he called the storm. He spoke to the storm. You see, faith. God, our God, our Father, said God of faith. By the word of God was faith. The word was faith. God spoke the word into existence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's jump to verse 6. Amen. Hallelujah. See? But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Amen. For who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. He is a rewarder. When you approach God, you believe the God says. That he is who he says he is. You approach God with confidence. Amen? 
Hallelujah. There's no way that any person can please God without faith. See, you obey God because you believe in Him. You believe the Word of God. You believe His commitments. You believe what is written. You believe what He's done through Christ Jesus for us. And in that promise, you approach God. Amen? By faith. It's by faith. It's by faith you approach God. God's real. He's your father. And he loves you. He loves you. You can approach your father. By faith. Jesus made it possible for us to approach God. Hallelujah. And by faith we please him. Without faith it's impossible to please God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We please God by faith. Through faith we know Him. And we do His will through faith. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. No one can do the will of God without faith in God and in His Word. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Ephesians. In chapter 4, in Ephesians chapter 4, the Lord Jesus gave gifts to men. Let's read Ephesians 4 to see those gifts that our, our Lord Jesus gave to men. Why he gave those gifts to men. Let's go together to Ephesians 4, chapter 4 and let's read the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. We're talking about faith today. Amen. Nothing can replace faith. Ephesians chapter 4, let's speak it out in verse 12. Amen. Let's read together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's start in verse 11. And him said, Jesus gave some to be apostles. Some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers. Here, listen, and look in your Bible, verse 12. It said, For the equipping of the saints. That's, those gifts was given to men for the equipping of the saints. Amen? For the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Verse 13. Till we will come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. To a perfect man or mature man. To the measure of the stature of fullness of Christ. This operation of this gift that the Lord Jesus gave to me is through faith. Nobody can fusion those gifts without faith. You only can fusion through faith. Faith. And, and the most important thing, many have forgotten why they received the gift. Before the equipping of the saints. Thus, this gift, they're not hierarchy. Okay? Because some think, some, some think that, oh, because they call themselves prophet or pastor. Maybe they've been called by Jesus. But they think there's honor for them or hierarchy. This is not it's a gift, remember. And, and our Lord Jesus explained it here in Ephesians. In Ephesians for the equipping of the saints. Okay? That's what those gifts give. For the equipping of the saints. For the work of ministry. For the defying of the body of Christ. That's what those gifts give. To help the body of Christ to mature. And to be ready to serve. Amen? Till we all come to the unity of the faith. Not the faith that everyone faith. The faith in Christ. 
one faith. <laughs> and of the knowledge of the Son of God. You know, this gift has to help the body of Christ to know Christ. To know Him in a personal way. In an intimate way. That's what gift was given to help the body of Christ. To so all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. This, this gift, you use this gift by faith. These gifts are for the equipping of the saints. Not to follow men around. Remember when Paul said the Corinthians, they called them babe because they were in contention, saying, I'm from, I'm, I'm Apollos, I'm Paul, I'm Christ. And Paul said, why is that divided? See? Stop following men around. Those give as to equip the body of Christ. So in my Bible, what is saying in your Bible? And he said again, some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastor and teacher for the equipping of the saints. Amen? Gives. Didn't buy it. Duty Ernest was a gift. He has a gift given to you to help the body of Christ and nothing to be to be like more higher than your brother and sister okay don't try to be a, a god for your brother and sister you got to help them amen hallelujah and to faith we use this gift It's important that we know that. Sometimes things we forget things. <laughs> Romans one seventeen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Romans one seventeen. For in, in the righteousness of God is the view from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen? We all, we all believe in the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And we are called to live by faith. And Jesus said, believe in God, believe in me. <laughs> See? By faith. We have to live in this earth by faith in God and His Word. By faith. Through faith. <laughs> and we do the will of God by faith. We accomplish what God called us to accomplish in this earth by faith. We fulfill our call by faith. We are called to live by faith. Remember, we belong to the kingdom of God. We are in this earth, but we not belong to this earth. We belong to the kingdom. In the kingdom of God, is, everything is by faith. This is the way of the kingdom. Faith. It's not the other way around. Many people want to replace faith with natural things. Even inside the church. They want to put natural things instead of the faith. So, some even want to replace the anointing by things. The anointing is already in you. 
Christ and you, the hope of glory. If the anointing one is in you, you are anointing. And that anointing flow through faith. But it's in you. It's in you. That anointing flow through faith and by faith. Because the anointing one lives in you. If the anointing one lives in you, you are anointing. And you have to exercise your faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Romans 10. I said Romans. Romans 10, yes. Let's go to Romans 10. Let's go together there and see the word of God. Hallelujah. We're supposed to love the word of God. Love it. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and in hearing by the word of God. How faith comes? By hearing and in hearing the word of God. Did you see that? Okay. Very important that this gospel must be preached. People need to hear the gospel. That's the faith come. Hearing, hearing by the word of God. Hearing the truth, <laughs> sound doctrine, anointing preaching. Amen. And believers need to study the word of God in their own. Meditating in the word of God. Even speaking the word of God aloud. They hear, they, they hear themselves. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen? So we study the word of God with the help of the Holy Spirit and faith increase in us. Because God already gave us a measure of faith. Amen? Our faith increase hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's go to Jude. Jude 20. We're still talking about faith. Amen. Some people, they're so smart. They don't want to replace the things of God by natural things. And they want to put the spiritual thing and faith aside. And they want to bring to the church only natural things. Because they think they're wiser than God. You know what you want to get when you do that? You want to get only natural things. Think that they don't have no value for the kingdom of God. And then, next, next time you have to try again the same thing or come with new things. That's where some come with new things every day. Because that's what happens when you try to implement natural things and the, and the spiritual things. You to any. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? Building yourself up. <laughs> you want to build yourself up in your holy faith? Pray in the Holy Spirit. Remember Paul said, I pray unto him more than you all. Okay? But we have to imitate Brother Paul and pray in the Holy Spirit that our faith, that we get strong, that we build ourselves ah, in, our, the most, in our faith, in the Holy Faith. Amen? Praying, building yourself up in your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Spirit. Verse 21 says, Keep yourself in the love of God. Remember? 
God loves all of us. But how do you keep yourself in the love in the love of God? You keep yourself in the love of God, like Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commitments. If you love me, keep my word. That means do it. Okay. That way you keep yourself in the love of God. God loves you. But you keep yourself in the love of God, keeping His word. Amen? Keeping His word. Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commitments, keep my word. That means do it. Right? Just, we build ourselves up in our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. In the same time, we keep ourselves in the love of God. Because if we build ourselves in faith, what we do? We always obey God. We keep His commandments. Amen? Hallelujah. So, we must pray. We must pray in the Spirit to build our, ourselves up. In the most holy faith. Must. This is a must. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Romans, Romans 12. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Someone say, if you don't use it, you lose it. <laughs> that we must use our faith every day. Every day. It's an opportunity to we use our faith. Every day we are challenged. Our faith are challenged. Every day our faith are test. That's why we have to build up, sell up. Because our faith is testing every day. I've been testing my faith every day, man. Every day my, my face test. And not every day the same, man. Eh? Not every day the same. <laughs> not every day the same. Every day we have new challenges that we have to exercise our faith. You think you have faith today, tomorrow is another challenge. Do you feel I need more faith? <laughs> yes. He this away from you. Pray in the Holy Spirit. When always pray without ceasing. Amen. And hear the word of God. Hallelujah. I heard someone say, you know, I think he was joking. But he said, Why well, God put everything by faith? <laughs> Why just don't give those things to us? Hey, we put it by faith. We have to run by that rule. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said Romans 12. Romans 12, let's start in verse 3. Thank you, Jesus. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself, more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, humble, as God's deal to each one a measure of faith. Then God gives a measure of faith to us. <laughs> then, yeah, let's go, this go with you, 20. Pray in the Spirit. <laughs> Be you have your more holy faith, pray in the Spirit. God gives you a measure, but you build yourself up. Pray in the Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Then when God's working through us or in us doing something in us, we don't need to be hiding, hiding themselves because through faith, the faith is from God. You see, when God's moving through you and doing something to you, you have to be humble because through faith. And faith is a gift. Of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Roman, we said Roman 12. We just read verse 3. 
Let's jump to verse 6. Hallelujah. Having then give differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. Let's use the gift. Hallelujah. In prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. You see, God give each one a measure of faith. And God called you and God gives you the gift. You have measure of faith to use that gift. Amen? Then use a proportion to that faith, that gift. And you know, and that faith and the gift is come from God. During your night. That's what Paul said. Don't think highly on you yourself. Don't think highly. Don't think of yourself more highly. Don't think of yourself highly than others. Because God is using you. Or because you think you, you, have, you have faith. Don't think highly of yourself. Be humble. Because everything comes from God. By His grace, like Paul said. Like Paul said, by His grace, I'm an apostle and a teacher and a preacher of the entire. By His grace. Paul never thought highly of himself. Better than nobody else. He was humble. And God used this man in a great way. And he suffered in a great way too for Christ. <laughs> but he always was humble. Because he knew that if faith was in God and everything he received was by faith and by the grace of God. Remember that. Hallelujah. Every spiritual gift is used by faith. Every spiritual gift is used by faith. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians 5, chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith, meaning we live by faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you live by faith, brother and sister? Do you live by faith? You see, the kingdom of God is by faith and through faith. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Mm. Can preach all day and that. Remember, by faith, not by sight. You're going to see a lot of things in this, in this world. He said, we go by faith, not by sight. And the, the children of the kingdom of God go by faith. Live by faith. Go by faith and living according to the truth of God's word. You might say it's hard, brother. I know, I know. Tell me about it. I've been living by faith for almost 20 years or more. And that is some time. For you have to reach to God and believe in Him. That's faith. You're trusting in Him, not yourself. That's faith. Not because your ability or your power. You're trusting in Him. That's faith. It is hard sometimes. But not impossible. Remember, with God, all things are possible. It's through Him. A faith in Him. Then verse Hebrews 11, verse 1, verse 1, Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the system of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You see, faith because you're trusting in God. He's going to do it. He's with me. He's never going to leave me. He's never going to forsake me. He's by my side. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I believe in Him, and I believe the anointing because He's in me. The anointing one, Christ, the anointing one living me. You see, faith in Him. We live by faith. We walk by faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 4. Say 
Some brother said, yeah, 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 I heard that. Okay. But you're you going to continue listening because the kingdom of God is by faith and through faith. You know, you go ask God, you're going to say, believe so, my son, believe. And Jesus will tell you, just believe. And the Holy Spirit will tell you, believe in God. You see, when, when, when things get tough, and you go to the Lord, he said, believe. That's what he said. Have faith. You're not going to say, poor my child, poor you. He said, he's going to tell you, believe. I am with you. I will come this world. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them But the words with the heard did not profit them Now be missive with faith in those who heard it You see the difference? The same gospel was preached to everyone Some profit by the gospel and all do not profit because they don't put faith to the word they hear. The word they hear, they don't put no faith. They don't miss it with faith. So if you want the word of God profit to you, believe. Trust. Trust. When you trust the God, you say, I believe in you, Lord. That's faith because that's the kingdom. That's the way of the kingdom. Nothing can replace faith in the kingdom. Remember, we are children of the kingdom. We are citizens of heaven. And the citizens of heaven walk by faith, not by sight. Hallelujah. The mere hearing of the gospel is not enough. It must also be believed. You have to believe the gospel. You must believe this gospel. You must believe the word. And I just I heard the word. Was a good message. That was an anti preaching. I heard many people say that. They go to me, they say, Oh, what's up, no, but they don't put faith in. And just was anointing, probably was anointing, was the word of God, was the gospel, but they don't put faith in it. Hallelujah. And I heard many years ago a preacher, he said when, when he was joined well, to a big meeting, famous preacher, with a group of friends, and the gospel was preached. He said, I was transformed, I was touched by my he said, by my friends, like nothing in there. He said, and we were together listening to the same gospel. I was touched, I was transformed, but they continue the same. He put faith. You see the difference? They put faith. He put faith in the word that was preached. We have to have faith in the Word of God. Remember, the Word were framed by the Word of God. Jesus is the Word. You cannot separate this Word here in the Bible with Jesus because Jesus is the Word. The Word became flesh. <laughs> Jesus. James chapter 5. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's read verse 14 and 15. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Is anyone among you sick? 
let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. It's important what he said here. If you want to see sick, you have to call for the elder of the church. <laughs> That's faith right there. The person is sick, call for the elder of the church. Let him call for the elder of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. You see? In the name of the Lord. Verse 15. In the prayer of faith. You see? The prayer of faith. But the elder will save the sick. I mean heal the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, it will be forgiven. You see what, what the prayer of faith does? Save, heal, deliver. <laughs> I, I, I've been seeing that many times, time over time, people getting, getting healed, delivered, and saved. You see, by the prayer of faith, by the preaching of the gospel. Sometimes I just pre been preaching and people just get healed. I don't even, sometimes I don't even make altar call and people get saved and they see. Then I, I, after, after I find out that people got saved. You see, because faith, everything is faith. When you preach, you preach with faith. The God saying, speaking to you. And the Holy Spirit is going to work. It's going to perform, it's going to perform what he needs to perform because the, the gospel being preached. The truth, sound doctrine. Because God and the Holy Spirit work through sound doctrine, through the word of God, through the gospel. Amen? Hallelujah. The prayer of faith is important, the prayer of faith. <laughs> if you want to pray for somebody, you better have faith. Believe the God's going to move. The God's going to touch that person because you're praying in faith. Remember the Holy Spirit that do the work, but you have to pray in faith. We're collaborating with God. We believe the God's the healer. Jesus already done it by the stride you were healed. And we believe that's why we pray for the sick. And not only pray, but declare what Jesus has already done. And you have to believe too. You have to receive when the brother and sister pray for you and declare the truth of the word of God that you are healed. You have to receive it in the Holy Spirit world because faith. Luke 18. This is the kingdom of God. Luke 18, verse 8. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We're going to read, we're going to read this whole verse, but we need the, the end of this verse, but we're going to read the whole verse. Luke 18, verse 8. I'll tell you that. He will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really? <laughs> look, at, look at this question. Will he really find faith on the earth? What a question. See, this Jesus speaking. When he returns to this earth, he will find faith in this earth. I hope so. <laughs> There will be men and women believing in Jesus for, for his return. You see, Maranatha was waiting for, for Jesus. Who really an expectation of Jesus' return? Who really is walking? It's now just say, I'm waiting for the Lord. I hope He come. You see, if you're really waiting for Him, you'll be busy doing his will his will walking in obedience walking in faith because walking in faith means walking in obedience that show you or that show that you really waiting for him you really doing his will no no you will his will hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Hina Kang and Fang all, all busy doing our own agenda. He told me many years ago, he said, Enrique, many, they are building the king, their kingdom, but not my kingdom. If someone says they believe it, they build their own kingdom, they don't have faith. If you have faith in him, you will be busy building his kingdom. So I think that question goes with that. When the son of man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Remember, without faith, no one can please God. So the question is, when Jesus returns, we will find people doing his will, walking in obedience, walking in faith. I pray that the whole church be ready. In Jesus' name, amen.